Hey, I'm, I'm Troy. I do vocals for Live Conform Die. Uh, from Perth, we're from Perth, Australia. Uh, and shout out to the Bandits 6021 hockey team. Would you say, what did you say? The shout out to who? Uh, the the Balcata Bandits 6021 hockey team. What? Who is that? Can you elaborate on that? What's that? That is that is my ice hockey team that I play for here. Hell yeah! How long have you been doing that for? Uh, I playing ice hockey about five years now. Um, yeah. If you if you weren't full time in the band, would you would you pursue per professional hockey? <laughs> no, there's there's it's not competitive over here. Okay, okay, okay. I I, I didn't it's, know. It's, just, it, it's just rec leagues. This is not a whole lot of ice in uh, in Australia, is what you're saying. <laughs> no, there's uh there there was three rinks in Perth at one point, but one's closed down. For sure. Uh, I think I think, sir, the, the first song I ever heard of yours was Blood Eagle. And Blood yeah. Eagle completely took me sideways when I heard it. Can we can we open with that? Obviously, I'm going to play a bunch of the new stuff. We're going to we're going to promote all the new stuff. But can we talk about Blood Eagle? And what is that song initially even about? Uh, Jez wrote uh, most of it. Um... Fuck, I haven't listened to that song in a while, hey. Um, Blood Eagle, Blood Eagle. You should be able to see my screen now, by the way. Oh, cool. Yeah, I can. So you'd be able to hear it and see my screen now. But, um... Yeah. Yeah, do, is this even in the set anymore? Uh, we didn't play it at the most recent show uh, because we were playing a bunch of the new stuff. Uh, this is, like, one of my favorite songs. Um... But unfortunately, when we did it on Spotify, when we put, released the single and released the album, it, it, it went through as two separate songs. So it's it's like kind of like... The it, algorithm like pushed it away kind of thing? Yeah, yeah, because instead of all the views being on the one song and it being like... It, it should be like one of our biggest songs on Spotify, but it's like it got nerfed because it's two separate songs. I got you. So, so yeah. well, well, let's go with the new stuff then. Let's talk about Terror Wave. Tell me about Terror yeah. Wave. Uh, Terror Wave was a fuck of a song because we we almost scrapped it. We rewrote it like ten different times. There we go. He's coming on. So almost scrapped it. So it went from almost not even being on the album to being a single. Yeah, that's right. That is interesting. Hold on, I want to I want to hear about that. But Jeremy, I appreciate you, sir. How are you doing? What are you snacking on, sir? What? <laughs> Yo. What's up? What you eating? What you grabbing on? I, I got the munchies all the time, bro. What you eating? <laughs> oh, man's got pancakes. Some pancakes? <laughs> hell yeah. Give me a hell yeah. <laughs> 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 Let's talk about Terror Wave, though. Uh, Troy, take it away. Tell me tell me about Terror Wave. Uh, yeah, fuck. Uh, we, we wrote it because we just fucking... We wanted... Jeremy was like... We were listening to a lot of hard bass at the time, and we were just hard like, bass like like track? like EDM or like nasty, dirty oh, tone on bass party. guitar. Uh, uh, like like Russian Russian Gopnik hard bass. Okay, interesting. So then that yeah. just kind of like sparked the 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 vibe of of getting like kind of recreating that sound, but being in your own in your own style of how you do it. Yeah, like. I, I'm still I'm still a little bit mad at Jeremy because I wanted to do like a a big hard bass section in the middle somewhere, uh, but we we ended up not doing it. Because you guys did. you guys have a song that we'll play in a little bit, and I forget the title, but it almost is like a hard style song in the beginning, and then it kind of goes into all the screaming stuff. All but it's like yeah, that's this one. Oh, okay. Well, I'm tripping. I'm sorry. Yeah, this is the one. Yeah. That, so you wanted like a crazy drop going on. Of what you're saying? In the middle. In the middle. So, but we didn't. Come on, going. Jeremy. That's nasty. I'm just playing, fellas. Before I need, I need to do a little bit of a deep dive with you. I need to know some some history about yourselves, Jeremy and Troy. Tell me, tell me what even inspired you to be musicians. What 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 album is the farthest back you can remember where you're like, man, 
this is the one that I want to be a vocalist. I want to play music. I want to, I'm inspired by this album. What, what album did that for you? UFOs. UFO? <laughs> no, no. I said Jeremy UFOs. I think he said UFOs, um, and I was like, hmm. Slipknot self titled. Slipknot self titled. Is, is there a particular song off of it that was your favorite from it? Uh, Eyeless uh, was favorite from the self title and Everything Ends and Heritage Anthem off of Iowa. Hell yeah. Good call. I think most people that answer that I interview that uh, answer Slipknot say Iowa, but yeah, I, I think I would agree with you the self title I prefer. Mine was uh, uh, Backstreet Boys. I used to sing it in my bedroom as a kid a lot. Um, for, for real, for real, you're not you're not playing right now. For real, for real. I'm, not, I'm not kidding. I, not I used to have this like this little like uh, it looked like an eyeball um, CD player. Like it was like a hell chunky CD player. This little thing, and I used to just the Backstreet Boys CD just to, used to live in there. Used to listen to that a lot. So like the first uh, Backstreet Boys album. Oh fuck! I don't know what album it was. Um, well, because I uh, I bring it up because this is gonna sound weird, but my mom. My mom was a huge boy band fan when I was a kid. So she would take me to all the Backstreet Boys, NSYNC, 98 Degrees, uh, O-Town, all the shows. So I am very familiar with just about every Backstreet Boys song, NSYNC, blah, blah, blah. Um, I even did NSYNC in the talent show one time once, but uh, I totally did not yeah. expect that as an answer. What what gave, what gave made you get a little angry? Get a little, mm, get a little oomph in it. Uh, no, nah. <laughs> I, I I was listening to, it was like, uh, my brother was hell into Lincoln Park when I was like 10 years old. So like, I, he, I would always hear it walking to my room through his door and that got me into it. This is your older brother? Yeah. Yeah. He's like three years older. So he was listening to like, um, hybrid theory and Meteora and I would always hear it walking past his room. Were you, were you ever able to attend a Lincoln Park in Australia show? I did see them once at uh, at Soundwave in like 2011 or 12, whichever one it was. Hell yeah! And I, at, at that point, it was they were like on like minute minute uh, minutes to midnight era and stuff, so For I sure. wasn't that into it. But I was sitting up on on a hill and got to watch them play a couple of their like the songs I love, which is pretty cool. Hell yeah! Very cool, fellas. Uh, let's ask Jeremy. Jeremy, as the as the pancake uh, man of the, of the hour, what is your favorite munchy food? When uh when you're on you're riding a good one, what's your favorite munchy go to food? Uh, uh this this is like uh this is cookies from Woolworths, no Coles, and they're like the blue packet cookies and like I could yeah. eat about they're fucking huge. There's like there's probably like maybe forty in there, fifty. And I could just smash oh, I thought you meant one so big ass cookie. I was like, dude. No 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 no, like it's like a fifty cookie like Blue box of them, <laughs> and they're just you just they're just gone. They're just gone. <laughs> yeah, I just but yeah. You can you can make yourself sick pretty easily. Well, we don't want that. Uh, I know you guys are are you linking up with Dropout King soon? Yeah. How did how did how did that come about? Uh, with, with the tour with Dropout Kings. I think they were just reached out to us. They reached out they to you out. guys. Yeah, and we were like. Oh, yes. We That's cool, because that. I, I feel like, me personally, like, we've had Dropout Kings on the show a bunch of times. They were our headliners for our festival here in Southern California, and uh, I feel like they're kind of a very big up-and-coming states band, and that's got to be cool, like, from, from a, a personal perspective to have what I would say is a big up-and-coming band reach out to you guys and be like, bro, we want yeah. you guys to open up for us. That's well, gotta be awesome. a bit of a previous relationship because they we had them on um, one of us one of our singles, uh, Luxury Letdown. Uh, but it, so we didn't know we, we did like there was a, some sort of a relationship there, but we uh, they yeah they were like yo we're touring you want on and then Liv was like our manager was a uh, was more than happy. Hell yeah! Once uh once once let's just say hypothetically. An infinite amount of money falls in your lap right now, and you're going on a on a world tour. Blah blah blah. You don't have to spend the money. The labels are spending the money. Blah blah blah. Where's a particular country or city 
that you would circle on your calendar like i want to play this country this city more than you want to play all of them but which one do you want to play a little bit more than the others you good uh i feel like moscow would be insane i was literally about to say damn like, not, like, not right now moscow. surely not right now though or right now while it's insane oh why well, not uh right now would probably be a bit of a stretch but i mean <laughs> i R- russia's invading them they're not getting invaded so i think if we were to go there we're, we're, we're not in too much trouble and moscow is like on the far east of the country so just making sure you guys are okay when you come back just making sure you know put out yeah, the disclaimer. Well, <laughs> we'll fly we'll, we'll fly around the war zone for yeah. sure all good uh let's jam let's jam cyanide real quick is is cyanide which seems to be you know the spotify top one is this would you say this is a fan favorite or just is this one of those algorithm things i think both both. but it's always in the set pretty much yeah yeah. yeah. uh on circuit 94 this was the last song we did and we actually just had the mentality of like let's just do like a more metalcore like not what the rest of the album was and this seems to be the one that people like the most and it just got picked up by the algorithm as well so we were just like that's perfect we love it no one that i've ever asked which i don't i very rarely ask it can explain how the spotify algorithm works because we're none of us were like oh well our biggest song is this song but it puts it at number four so we don't know like do you have any idea how the spotify algorithm so does work the algorithm works by listens per month so Whatever gets the most amount of listens um, in a specific time frame goes to the top. So we know that Cyanide gets like, I don't know, like per per thirty days. Per second. thirty days, it adjusts. Yeah, it's per thirty. Yeah. I did not know that. Okay, well, let's jam Cyanide. It, it Here does we go. adjust. It does. It does adjust every day, but um, it's usually like based off a thirty-day period. Gotcha. Let's jam a little side eye and then we'll get into some trivia. And fellas, my jolt, my job is to stump you, so be ready. <laughs> so before before it rips it up and gets nasty, Troy, Troy, what's the best hip hop album ever made? Because clearly there's a oh, hip hop hip hop influence going on here. What's what's the best hip hop album ever made? If you can't pick, just give me three. Doesn't it can be in any order? Three three favorite hip hop albums. Um. The Eminem show stands out as like that man was doing doing flows, not only flows and rapping, but some of his he's he's a bit of an underrated singer. Eminem, I always think he he's a lot better than people take him, give him credit for. Um, he was just like really he didn't take it serious, which I love. Um, I don't know I, I I had this conversation yesterday actually. Um, I always love Linkin Park, but I always found Mike Shinoda's rapping very flat. Very like, like it's good, but it's it's it, it was like it never like jumped up or anything. So that that was like an influence. Um, actual hip hop. Um, to pimp a butterfly. Oh, Kendrick. Yeah, to pimp a butterfly. Yeah, it's gonna be the, my my favorite. For me personally, oh, yeah. is uh, it was written, which is Nas's second album. Nas oh, yeah. Nas's second album is my probably my top. And then uh, I was like, uh, "Me Against the World," with from uh, Tupac. This is a bunch, dude. For real, there's a bunch. I'm, uh, I'm not. A, I'm not a huge hip hop buff. Don't really? Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't. You wouldn't I, be I just, able to know because you're working into the flow <laughs> so easily. I, I think I just. I, there's like not specific albums that stand out. I've just. I think I've over my years. I've just heard so much, thanks to the radio and stuff that. I got you. Brought about, yeah. As uh, as as people that that as artists that live in Australia, I know the cannabis rules are a little bit different over there. A, are you four twenty friendly? And and B, what should they do about the the cannabis laws in Australia? Legalize it, man. <laughs> Small it, weed it, 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 every every GP you go to, every general practitioner you go to, uh, they'll just be like, I don't even, I don't know why it's not legal yet. They, they, no one has any idea. So we need some form of government something to happen to, to, yeah. to push it over the top. Well, you can't, you can get medicinal here, but like it's a, it's a process. Yeah. It's, you can it's, get non-medicinal. 
Yeah, there you go. <laughs> or you can just hit up the homie and, and just, there you go. <laughs> uh, fellas, to do the trivia, I'm going to let you guys pick the topic. But I, my job is to stump you. You do not have to do this if you do not want, because you're the talent, you're the guest. But I ask our, our guests, if you have hot sauce in your location, go grab it. Because if I am able to stump you, take a swig of hot sauce. If you think I'm tripping, here's a whole bunch of hot sauces right now on my screen that I have. If I'm not able to stump you, I'll do the hot sauce. You do not have to do it, no worries. But if I was gonna ask you trivia, what movie or TV show could you both agree on that you've seen the most? Not your favorite, you've seen it the most. Where if I ask you anything about South Park, oh. Simpsons, Terminator, Harry Potter, doesn't matter. This movie or TV show, you've seen it a million times, you will not get stumped. I'll let you, I'll let you guys think about it for a second. I'm gonna throw in Big Homie, because that just sounds like a cool ass record right there. Sup, Big Homie? It's Britney, bitch. Give me a hell yeah. Harry Potter or whatever. Before we pick the topic, uh, who does most of your guys' audio production? Who do you go to for for the recordings? This man right here. My, uh, I do uh, recording mix master. Dude, hell yeah! What's what's your go to DAW? And um... uh, I just do Studio One, fucking four or something, whatever it is. Professional cool. And it has all the mixing, mastering, uh, VSTs and all that stuff in it in the program. Yeah, yeah. Hell oh no, yeah. no, you gotta obviously you gotta buy all that shit, but yeah. Right, 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 right. But uh, you've invested in your in your career, is what you're saying. Yeah, uh, I wouldn't call it career. <laughs> I mean, I would. The recordings that I'm hearing right now could are up to par with people that I know paying hundreds of dollars. So you he might was, have some. He, he was doing um audio engineering for a while. Um. If you know the band um, Vacant Home, pretty big on Dreambound. Yeah, he he actually did their first album. Kelly, that's what's up, Jeremy, for real. Yeah. Fellas, did you pick the trivia topic? Fuck Simpsons. Oh, uh, I, know, I know a lot of Simpsons. Yeah, me too. Simpsons or Harry Potter? Oh, oh, man, yeah, it's Harry totally going to be Simpsons. Oh, no, don't, don't, don't do Harry Potter because I, I won't know book knowledge. Let's do the Simpsons. I only watch, I only watch the movies. Let's <laughs> do the Simpsons. And I, I've yeah. probably, I'm on my, I think, third. And I'm about to end it, uh, run through of watching The Simpsons from one from first to beginning. It's just I just put it in the background all the time. But uh, let's talk about ODD. What's ODD about? Oppositional defiance disorder. Defiant disorder. Um, it's a it's about being a kid and just hating your parents pretty much. Angst. Fair enough. Angry, <laughs> angry kid. I think that's all we need to hear, right there. It's. A little bit of rebellious oh, record right here. I will do. All right, fellas, here we go. Simpsons. In the okay, Simpsons, okay. what is the name of the bowling alley? Uh, it was in the game. It was in the game. Uh, what is it? Uh, Are you talking about tapped ball. out? Tapped out or hit and run when you say the hit game? And run. Hit and run. Okay, what is the name of the bowling alley? I'll give you a hint. The first name so of it Google is it. the name of one of Homer's best friends and then bowling alley name. That's your hint. I feel, I feel like it's something pins. split. Something, something, something pins or something split. No, because the, 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 the bowling team is pin pals, but I think it's something split. That is incorrect. <laughs> that is incorrect. It is Barney's Bolorama. You do not have to do this, but if you have hot sauce around, I suggest you go grab it. I'll still do the hot sauce. Lemon juice. Oh, that's excellent. I'm not, I'm not a hot sauce guy. I'll do some. I'll do some hot sauce. I'll do some. Uh, I'll pull like the second or third hottest one I got. It's called Japanese Dragon's Breath hot sauce. You do the lemon juice, I'll do the hot sauce. Let's do a little luxury letdown. Feature on our boys in Dropout Kings. The chat wants to know who's who's directing all your guys' music videos because they're killing it. Uh, we usually just have some shitty idea and then we give it to the director that we want to work with and he sort of just pulls something out of his ass. Can we name um, drop the director that we're talking about though? Um, this the one who did this one is uh, Jackson Healy. He's a photographer and he does videos and shit. Who, who did Terror Wave? 
Emil Smith. So you guys bounce around on 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 who you who you're working with. Is that is yeah. that is that like a management decision or is that your personal decision as a band? Like we we just like this guy's work. We want to work with him, or is that advised from management slash label stuff? Troy, you answer this. Uh, the first the first two like Jackson's done two videos for us. He did uh, Blood Eagle and Luxury. And he was really open to like just try trying some stuff and working with us to see what we can come with. Um, just he just wanted to make stuff, so we were like kind of gave him free reign a bit on those. Um, but with uh, Terra Wave, we were uh, um, we knew Emil had uh, access to some things that we um, wanted to do and some ideas we had, and we did like three days of filming with Emil compared to like with Jack, both music videos with Jackson. It was like one day each. Does. We're back. Okay. I had a little bit of a hiccup. Just right trying there. new things. We wanted to try someone else. We, we lost a little bit of your answer on the end <laughs> and that's my fault. I, there was like a, a stall on my end, blah, blah, blah. Um, I do want to ask you though about, about the band name because I've always known you guys as conform. It's always live, conform, die. I'm sure you get asked this all the time. What what started? Can you explain a what is it? Does the symbols, which I'm assuming are like Japanese or Chinese, does this mean live and die on the end, on the front, and the on the end of them? Uh, I don't think it's actually strictly like the verb live. I think it's like life and death. Yeah, life conform death so, uh... is what it would translate to. But when um, when you play when you play out on a regular basis, do they put on the marquee conform or do they put live no, conform use, die on the marquee? Away, we're moving away from the uh, the kanji stuff now, so um, we just do one one word live conform die, and then that goes on all, uh, all gotcha. that shit. Is is there a particular artist that you guys have wanted to to get on a track, aka like a feature? Doesn't have to be a vocalist; could be like a guest solo anything in the world but is there a particular artist that you've wanted to work with and it maybe just hasn't worked out yet because of timing or whatever the case may be and if so timing, what, timing contact money um i've always wanted corbin i actually wanted oh i love telling you a story i actually wanted kid Leroy on a track like four years ago really he had like ten thousand um followers yeah and jeremy and we, we didn't really have a song that fit him so we never actually hit him up like but look at him now. Now You're you like, got to bust oh, out man. the bang, dude. Now you got to bust out the bang for him, for sure. Yeah, he's all over the radio after the Beaver track, for sure. Um, if you guys, if you guys uh, hypothetically played for, you you made it to Russia, and everyone's like, dude, I'm tired of this f-ing war. Let's go to see the show. Let's go see the boys and conform and just have a kick ass time, man. Hundred thousand people show up. Biggest show of your life. So we're all backstage. We're partying, we're drinking, we're doing shots. Who's the last member in the band standing? Ben, Muzz. No, wait, oh no, Jeremy's, you... Jeremy's saying he's got no, it. No, 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 it'd be, it'd be, it'd be Muzz for sure, Ben. Well, you, you could put an entire dump truck of alcohol and illicit substances into that boy and he will still be up at the <laughs> next day until like midday. He says, he says, I'm ready to kick ass, let's go. Okay! okay. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Jeremy would have one beer and still be in bed by 9 p.m. I would sniff the fucking cork on the wine bottle and I'm in bed. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> if, so, so let's talk about the new album. Uh, obviously, we played Terraform. What song do we have to hear right now that you're most proud of, let's say? Maybe it's not even out yet as far as a single, but what song do we have to hear right now? Um, new life. Terror Wave is my thing, but New Life is also pretty huge. Uh, it's interesting that you both said the same song, yet it's the last song on the EP. Is that yeah. is that strategic that you save the best for last, or why? What's the thought process behind the track listing order? It's the uh, tuning. It's a familiar tune- tuning. Oh, okay, I didn't know that actually, but. Um, fetish in the dark and help yourself all like flow really well. Terror wave was high energy. Trash cultures chill. Big homie is like heavy, but it's also kind of chill. 
And then New Life is like, I felt like it was like the the most like our older music. So we wanted to close on like a uh, something big and feel yeah, it feels like it feels like us. Yeah. Let's jam it. I'm gonna look up a little more Simpsons trivia. This is New Life, guys. If you're watching, you're feeling the music. Please, 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 please support the band. Hit that follow button. Hey, Jeremy, you're saying you did all that right there on the recordings? I did. Yo. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. We're Yo, you not. killed it, bro. You killed it. And I'm not even playing. You killed it for real. But, Thanks, fellas, man. the hardest question I've asked you all day. Here we go. In Lisa's Sacks, the episode is literally titled Lisa Sacks. Homer sacrifices something to buy Lisa a new saxophone. Oh. What he goes, does he, he goes, sacrifice? He goes into King Tut's music to buy it. Uh... The story revolves around Bart's adjustments to school and how the Simpsons discovery that, that Lisa is a gifted child. That's the plot for oh. the episode. But Homer takes something from his house and sacrifices it for the family to get her a new saxophone. It's not the TV. Uh, oh. oh man, that is such that, that's should, like a twenty-year-old episode. I should know this. What is it? Oh. It's the air conditioner. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He, he he sacrifices the brand new air conditioner to buy her a saxophone. That means gotcha, bitch. Here we go. Now it could land on a prize. More than likely, it's gonna land on a torture. Fellas, I know you're drinking beer. At least Troy, you are. Go ahead and hit that beer hard. I'm gonna take a shot. We have time for about maybe one or two more questions. Uh, fellas, again, hypothetically, infinite money as I get the shot set up. Uh, now, all of a sudden, you're, you're, inst you're, you're instant millionaires. I told you this would be a weird, weird interview, but we're having fun. Uh, what What is your dream car? What's your dream car? Just, just has his car. I got my dream car. You already own it. Uh, well, yeah. I you know. Well, that's what like, the bluff. Without, without being some, like, Pagani Zonda 17 million yeah. car. Uh, no, if, okay, if I had, if I had infinite money, Bugatti Chiron, but I currently own a BMW M3 E92. Nice! Um, M3, hell yeah. And, and that thing is lovely. I had a, I, when I was 16, listen to this, my homie whose mom is a brain surgeon bought him an M5 at 16 and we were like bro he wrote it off that sh is like 90 grand who who the f gets a 90 new, grand car as their first car at 16 years the old new m3s the new m3s the top ones are like five 400 500 grand okay well this i i'm i'm in my mid-30s so maybe at that time it was a used one oh, i don't i don't yeah. know <laughs> But he had an M5, and I was like, bro, that's not even fair. I'm, I'm rolling up in a, in a Civic, uh, this is a, the basic new Civic, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Um, okay, so we did the shot. Fellas, uh, I'm going to ask you one really important question, and then we'll send you you guys out with a, with a hell yeah. What is, and I ask every every guest we have in this, on the show the same question, this final same question, and this is an important one. What is, a, what is a piece of music advice that somebody has told you guys that completely personally was an eye opener for you or a terrible mistake you made early on in your career that you don't want any band that's watching right now, maybe they're just starting out playing in their garage, you don't want them to make this mistake? One or the other. Mm, I'd say... Listen, listen when, 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 when someone says your mix is shit, listen to them. Uh, but don't listen to people when it comes to songwriting. Do what you fucking want. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to vocals, focus more. Like, obviously, pitch is important. Focus more on the timbre and tone than trying to hit some like soaring melody. Listen to what fits. Yeah. Listen to what fits and, too. So don't yeah, don't. It. So if, if you're struggling on the note, you're saying, Troy, essentially, 
don't yeah. don't struggle on the note find a way to kind of ride ride it into the section yeah, and, and still be dope is what you're saying figure out the intensity of what you want to do if you if you can't hit a note comfortably and you expect to be able to do it live a hundred times then you're gonna have a bad time right right <laughs> Write, write what fits your voice, find what, what's comfortable in your own range and tone, and then write music revolving around that. Don't, don't try and follow a trend and write music because you're trying to be like a certain band. Okay. It, my, my final question is, what I know you guys have a lot planned for the rest of the year. Obviously, probably some stuff mapped out in 2023. We're not allowed to know all those juicy details, but is there any one thing that you can tell us that maybe you haven't told any other podcast channel show anything one little juicy something hey we're, we're coming up this is coming soon be ready anything along the lines of that we've uh we, we were actually um listening through our like we've had some demos sitting longer than some of these songs for the new ep have been on the works so we've been going through our like old old demos and we've got like maybe three or four tracks Some hopefully coming out next year dog shit. when you say old 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 demos do you mean like old 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 way back like, 2018, way back. like, like 2018 as let me ask you this then so just one final additional question as as an artist and i would say you know you guys are getting pretty well known as far as We've heard about you over here. Things are working out well. The tours are getting better and bigger, blah, blah, blah. Why go back to the old material? Is there still some juicy stuff left over that's just unfinished and, and it just wasn't time for that yet, as opposed to writing fresh new stuff? Which, this is not a, you know, a negative comment by any means. Sometimes it's just not time yet for these old records to see the light of day. But uh, surely there's some heat left over that nobody's heard. But why go back to those old records? Uh, just, just untapped potential. Like, there's, there's a bunch of riffs that Jeremy never expanded on, and I like if if he wrote some of these songs and they just took over the the time to to focus on. So there, there's there's a bit that we're sifting through, mainly him that we want to use. There's always space for new work. shit, obviously. Like we're we're gonna yeah. we're, we're obviously gonna take the older material and like see what works. Uh, from back then, but and and work newer riffs into it, but um, like some of the old shit I wrote is just like absolute dog shit, and some of it's like really good. So it's um, very hit and miss. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> it's like some of it's absolute <laughs> terrible, but some of it's really good, dude. <laughs> Somewhere in between. <laughs> he, he, he was playing a riff the other day, and it, it's it's pretty chunky, but it's like we were both just looking at each other like. This is like super chromatic and boring. Like, <laughs> yo, show me, show me your your tattooed wrist real quick, Troy. I see you got a, I think a Rick and Morty song oh, right there. Oh no, no, I was that. I went and watched um a couple couple of bands last night. Um, stamp. Yeah, it's just a stamp. Uh, so I went and watched uh, our mates' bands, Dark Matter, last night with Atlas. I thought it was literally like a one minute Rick and Morty tattoo, and you were just like, you know what, I'm done. I, I... <laughs> I'm having a change of heart. I don't want this tattoo. I don't know what it was, but <laughs> I saw you hold it up a couple of times. But, uh, but uh, fellas, this is a lot of fun, man. I appreciate you guys. I've been wanting to talk to you for a long time, ever since I heard Blood Eagle. But uh, you guys are super cool, man. I wish you nothing but success. This will be on YouTube later tonight, if it's okay with you guys. Yeah. Hell yeah. Cheers. Stay safe no. on the road. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, man. No, no, good. Good. Wait, what, the, what the What the f***? Nah, I'm just, no one said no, but uh, th you never know. I, I want to respect the talent. So if, if if there was something that was discussed that you didn't want to be on YouTube for eternity, then that would be why you would say no, I suppose. My, I, my poor Simpsons knowledge, I don't want to know. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't want people to know that you stumped me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, for real, you guys are awesome, man. Stay safe on the road. Enjoy hanging out with Dropout Kings. Tell them we said what's up. And uh, you guys are welcome back anytime, man. Cheers. I appreciate you doing this. And uh, Thanks, much, su much up, success to you guys, for real. Thanks, man. Ladies and gentlemen, confirm! Give me a hell yeah! Hell yeah, brother! Thank you, guys. I'll see you. Hey, man. Hey, man.